So in the last video, we constructed a tensor, which I call T. In our case, we saw that this was formed out of two dual vectors taken together using this tensor product symbol. And we saw that this is a map, in fact, a multilinear map, which acts on a pair of vectors to produce a real number. So then, since we know that these dual vectors live in a dual space, we can define or express them in terms of their components and a particular basis. And now, because this is just a multilinear map, these scalars can be effectively pulled out, and we can just single out the vector part. And now we frequently abbreviate these two components into a single object, which has two indices. So I want to explore a little bit more now this multilinearity and what that means for us. So if we consider a tensor, which I'll call T for the moment, we can feed into that tensor two vectors. Since we know how vectors add, they just give us a third vector. This is just some other vector, say, called D. So this tensor is eating these two vectors. The multilinearity allows us to split this up in the following way. So now we realize something. This tensor is, in fact, a vector. So we know that the left-hand side is just going to be a real number, since it's a tensor that's eaten two vectors, which gives us a real number. Then the right-hand side are going to be some two other real numbers. I could call it R1 and R2. Since we know that real numbers behave like vectors, we can see that this whole expression is effectively a vector expression. So to see this a bit more clearly, it's helpful to introduce a particular basis for our tensors. So if I now write if I now introduce the first tensor, and I use the map notation, so we're completely clear about what this object is and what it does. So this is the exact same tensor that I've written up here. I've just called it now T1. And if we now consider another tensor, now we want to ask, how would we add these two tensors? Well, it's easiest to just simply write everything out in terms of the components. So we have the T1 plus T2. And now, because we know these are multilinear, we can just pull these scalars out. So I'll start with omega mu and sigma mu over here. And now we're left with the vector part of this map. And then we're adding to this tensor, this is one whole tensor, T1. We add to it uh, Okay, so this might not appear to have got us very far, but now we just need to take a step back for a second and think about what our sum convention index notation actually means. So we have repeated indices in all of these terms, so all of this whole thing is just a big sum. So if we now just look at this expression, it appears we have four indices. It is, in fact, only two indices, because the first expression, maybe it helps if I write brackets around these components. OK, so if we now consider the case where the index, all of the indices are 1, this will be e1, epsilon 1, epsilon 1, epsilon 1. So these two terms which are being added, we can in fact factorize these components and treat this object as being the same as this object. Since when we expand out all of the terms in the sum, we're just going to be left with the same string of um, basis maps 
as over here. It doesn't matter that the index is different because this is effectively a whole separate expression. We can just relabel the indices and write the whole thing as a factored sum. So now we see what we've done. We've effectively turned the sum of two tensors into a third single tensor because I can just relabel these now as being the components of this new tensor since we just have two indices here and then we have our basis maps. So this is just some third tensor T3.